Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about pens, something a little different than knives or other EDC items. So let's put some ink to paper, but first, I don't know, maybe some close-ups of some pens to be weird. Now, you may be thinking, Petite, I already have a pen shoved into my purse or backpack or fanny pack if you're hip and cool now, uh, but do you have that one pen that you love? The pen that is your ride or die for signing checks, yes, some people still sign checks, or writing letters to grandmama, or better yet, for those cases where you stop and realize, damn it, I don't have a pen. In college, my go-to pen was actually a Micron pen, and I thought I was super cool with my 0.5 millimeter tip style pen, but as the years went by, I sort of grew out of them. But I never outgrew the need for a pen. So this video is sort of an opinion style video where I go over a few pens that I have picked up along the way as I started this everyday carry adventure. The Micron pens will still hold a special place in my art-loving heart, but I legit have none in my possession right now. But let me go over the ones that I do have. I'll highlight some nice features about the pens and some things I think that could be improved on if necessary. And because retail made me obsessive about organization, I have this set up in a rainbow. So let's first start with the Everyman Original Grafton. And this was my first expensive pen purchase and I know that there are plenty of pens that are way more expensive, but this was my first time buying a pen that didn't come in a value pack. However, this brand is pretty popular and very well known in the EDC community, so I figured that I would buy it and give it a try. I was impressed with the quality of the pen, so I did buy one of their mechanical pencils in the limited edition Taipan color, orange, to match a knife, and also because the name is cool, Duh. So all that in pen sum, let me get back to the specifications. This is made of anodized 6061 aluminum, which is one of the most common grades of aluminum out there as it is strong and easy to machine. And it is 5.7 inches in length. The weight of this is lovely at 0.8 ounces and it's not unbalanced at all, which is really nice. It also features what they call a heavy duty bolt on clip. And I can attest that it is really nice and I cannot imagine ever bending this too far unless I'm being a goblin about it. This is also a click pen. So you can obsessively click it and annoy everyone around you. And this pen does retail at $44. Pros that I can say is that you can just buy ink refills, which is nice as it makes this pen a long-term companion and it does take a Parker style refill. I can see myself buying more of these in limited edition colors. Everyman, are you listening? Your girl could really use a Tiffany blue slash teal, please. And the only thing I will mention because this is anodized is that it will start to show signs of wear and tear and I haven't used this a ton. You can already see that there's a little bit of wear and tear on the bottom here. Moving right along to the pen that I bought as a companion for my Bumblebee EDC set. You can see the review here, here, somewhere. This is the Lamy Safari fountain pen, and I am a sucker for fancy fountain pens. It makes me feel bougie. The Lamy is made out of plastic, and it does feature a decently strong wire clip. In my other video, I mentioned that this pen does come with blue ink and I have yet to get black. Someday I will. 
And it brings me to my next point, which you can get refills. It is 5.5 inches in length with a weight above about 0.6 ounces. This pen does retail at about $30. So the pros for this pen is that the pen is lightweight. It does have a smooth writing tip, but it doesn't feel as balanced like some of the other pens. To me, it feels very back heavy and not balanced throughout the entirety of the pen. So the next pen is my recent purchase from Ferris Wheel Press, and I will admit I fell for their marketing that I saw on Instagram. So shout out to their marketing team. Good job. And also, uh, their imagery is just amazing. I bought this pen to match my new Tiffany Blue Mini Dundee. However, they don't match as well as I'd hoped, but that's okay. I'll keep my eye out for others. This version is the Carousel Fountain Pen in the Tumultuous Tides color. As, and at the time of this video, it is still in stock, but it's limited edition, so they probably won't be around long. Yay! That's what we call marketing. This pen is also made out of plastic, but it does not have a pocket clip. And as I mentioned earlier, it is a fountain pen. It is five inches in length, uh, and I didn't see any weight listed, which means I guess I need to buy my own scale soon. The dog agrees. However, this does not come with ink, but you can buy it separately, which I think is okay, and let me explain why. So part of their charm is that they offer some amazing ink colors, and being a designer, I was immediately drawn to their inks. And if you like shimmer inks or unique colored inks that come in a really cool bottle, definitely check them out. The pen itself is only $25, and there are more expensive pens out there on their site, so maybe I'll get myself a nice birthday gift. And then I will feel like a fancy man who has made it in the world. Or I'll buy myself a bottle of scotch, haven't decided. That's what old rich people do. Some of the pros that I like to highlight is they have probably some of the most beautiful packaging that I have seen, and they are at really good price points as well. They also have the, a really large selection of ink colors and pen colors as well. And the only downside I think I would mention is that it does also feel unbalanced, not as much as the Lamy, uh, but it doesn't feel as well made as the Lamy. And the plastic feels thinner and you can kind of flex it if you squeeze it a bit. So this one is probably the heaviest pen that I own. <laughs> and it's tough to tell what it is because I've already shipwrecked this. So if you wanna learn how to shipwreck all of your brass or copper items, I have a tutorial that I will put up there oh, somewhere. Now, and pen. This is another everyman pen called the Brass Mini Twist. And this pen is made out of 100% solid brass, which is the only reason for the heft of this pen at 1.8 ounces. However, it is nicely balanced despite the weight. It is 5.11 inches in length. This one also features that heavy duty clip, but the difference here is that there is this one isn't a click, it's a twist, which I hope you discerned by the name of the pen. This pen is more expensive because it is brass, since brass is harder to machine and to work with, so it is $69, insert your joke here. Sometimes it is on sale though. So with all Everyman pens, you can buy refills, and with their quality, I would say they are worth the price because I really do like mine. And my only drawback is something I don't think they have any control over or could really make it better, and that is the weight. If you mill out more of the inside or change it so it's lighter, I feel it will degrade the sturdiness of the pen, but to me, the weight is not a make or break in this case. So the last one is the Big Idea Design Mini Bolt Action Pen. And this one is not mine because I bought this as a gift for my boyfriend. He wanted to make a full titanium set and needed a pen. The reason I haven't gotten one yet is because they are pricey as fuck. But even though this is an expensive pen, the features and details make the cost reasonable. 
This pen is made out of titanium and this is the stone washed version. It comes in a bunch of different finishes and materials such as DLC black titanium, raw titanium, brass, copper, and zirconium. Titanium is another metal that is difficult to machine and work with, so that leads to the cost. The pen weighs actually pretty similar to the Everyman original Grafton at 0.8 ounces. It is also 3.5 inches in length. This pen accepts D1 type refills, so you can choose other colors, and it does have a nice deep carry pocket clip, which they say is reversible. This is something I noticed when I used it a bit more because when I tried to use it with my right hand, it didn't feel right when I used the bolt action clip. It felt more like the pocket clip was orientated for a left-handed user. As I mentioned, this pen is pricey at $70, but again, you're buying a pen forever, so it really is worth the cost, I feel. So the pros for this is that it's well machined, it's small in size, and it's reasonably lightweight for the material. The only thing I have here for a con is the price, but again, not really a make it or break it. So now that I have gone through all the different features and options of the EDC pens that I have started to collect, I wanted to give you an idea of how you might be able to carry some of these items and why you want to invest in a long-term pen. And the easiest to carry based on size is definitely the mini bolt action. This one is going to be the one that takes up the least amount of space in your purse, pockets if you're lucky, or EDC pouch. Now, to be candid, I have had to attach a pen to my bra before because I've had no pockets and I couldn't carry anything in my hands. Retail is stupid. Now, for the ladies who know what I'm talking about, sometimes you just have to be a chipmunk and stash stuff. So if you're looking for a pen that you can use in the office or add as a luxury item, then I would definitely recommend the Ferris Wheel Press one. This one is lightweight but elegant, and while it doesn't have a pocket clip, that shouldn't stop you from being able to take it with you. On the other spectrum, if you're looking for a nice EDC pen, then I would recommend any of the Everyman pens. They're probably the nicest that I've come across, other than the big idea design ones, and they attach nicely to a bunch of things. Shirt pockets, pants pockets, inside the leggings if you have to. But I'm looking forward to see what you have in your own EDC sets. Do you have one that you're looking for as you're getting started, or do you have a pen that you think I should look at getting? Tell me in the comments some of your favorite pen brands. Also, before you go, I want to remind people that once my YouTube channel hits 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway for a donut-themed EDC. And I have a ton of stuff that I've bought and some things that have been donated and want to remind everyone that the faster we grow, the faster we can get to the giveaway. So please, please share my channel with your friends. Cause look at all this stuff. I got the, I got the donut knife. I got the flashy light upside down. Shh. I have some awesome Hanks from Phoenix Hanks and I have the coin and some stickers and I have this wonderful, uh, just this whole wonderful set here. So please share my channel. So that's it. That's all I got. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Did you love this? Hate this? Or are you sitting like Switzerland neutral to the world? As always, I try to end with something inspirational, something nice because everything is sort of on fire, literally. So my inspiration or cheat code for you all today is if you have a dented rug from furniture, you can add an ice cube on that spot for about 12 hours and then dry after that. And then what you can do is fluff the rug, rug with a fork and you can bring the rug back to life. So please subscribe or share my channel with your friends. I would appreciate it. Thank you everyone for taking the time and making it to the end. My self-esteem thanks you. The pen that is your ride. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. You okay? Decently strong wire clip. Why did you go in the box if you were just going to get out of the box? 
I'm trying to rationalize a cat here. <laughs> 